Well, butter my biscuit and call me Mary. You want me to spill the beans about my life? Well, darling, hold on to your hat, because I'm Typhoid Mary, and I've got a tail that'll curl your hair. You see, folks always painted me as the villain, but let me set the record straight. I didn't ask for this life, but I sure did live it with gusto. Now, if you're expecting a sob story, honey, you're in for a disappointment. I've always been one to call a spade a spade, and I ain't about to start sugarcoating nothing. So let's get this show on the road. My name's Mary Mallon, but you can call me Typhoid Mary, because that's the name that'll go down in history. I was born in 1869 in Cookstown, Ireland, and my family immigrated to the good old USA when I was just a young un. We settled in New York City, and I grew up faster than a pot of water boils on a hot stove. Now, let's get one thing straight. I love to cook. I mean, I was passionate about it. And I had a knack for it, too. Folks couldn't get enough of my peach cobbler or my fried chicken. If you wanted a taste of heaven, you came to Typhoid Mary's kitchen. But here's where the story takes a twist. You see, I wasn't just a cook. I was a carrier. I had a little something, something called typhoid fever in my system, and I didn't even know it. Heck, I never even had a day of sickness in my life. But I was spreading that fever like confetti at a New Year's Eve party. People started getting sick around me, and it wasn't long before the authorities came knocking on my door. They said I was the culprit, the one behind the outbreak. Can you believe that? Me, Typhoid Mary, just trying to make a living with my skillet and my spatula. Now here's where the story gets real interesting. Did I go quietly into that dark night, accepting my fate? Nope, not me. I was a firecracker, and I wasn't about to let anyone tell me what to do. I went on the run, honey. Packed up my knives and my recipes and hit the road. But let me tell you, it ain't easy being a fugitive when you're as famous as I was. The newspapers had a field day with my story, and they made me out to be some sort of monster. I kept cooking, though, because it's all I knew how to do. I worked in kitchens from coast to coast, always one step ahead of the law. And I'll be darned if I didn't serve up the best darn meals those folks ever tasted. But here's the kicker. I kept spreading that typhoid fever like a bad rumor. People kept getting sick, and the authorities kept hunting me down like a dog on a scent. It was a cat and mouse game, and I was the wily feline, slipping through their fingers time and time again. I guess you could say I had a stubborn streak a mile wide. I wasn't about to let nobody tell me what to do, especially not some fancy pants doctor who thought he knew it all. They wanted to quarantine me, lock me up like a criminal, but I said not on my watch. Finally, in 1907, they caught up with me for good. They threw me in quarantine on North Brother Island in the East River, and there I sat for three long years. It was like being in a prison, but I refused to back down. I wasn't about to let him break my spirit. In 1910, they let me go, but there was a catch. I had to promise never to cook for anyone ever again. Can you imagine? Me, Typhoid Mary, banned from the kitchen. It was like taking the wings off a butterfly. So, what did I do? I took on odd jobs, worked as a laundress, and lived a quiet life. But you know what they say about old habits. They die hard. I couldn't resist the call of the kitchen, and every now and then, I'd whip up a little something for myself. I spent the rest of my life under the radar, just trying to get by. But the legend of Typhoid Mary lived on, and I became a cautionary tale, a symbol of what can happen when stubbornness meets disease. So, there you have it, darling. That's the story of Typhoid Mary, the cook with a feisty spirit and a contagious secret. Some folks call me a villain, but I reckon I was just a woman trying to make her mark in this world, one skillet at a time.